Okay, welcome everyone. This is our December public health and safety meeting. And we're going to begin with um, minutes. I don't think we have the minutes yet. I think you're getting this from Bob. Right, okay. So we'll have to come back to that. So we can begin with public comment. And I see there's no one in the room, but we have several folks that can come Zoom. So uh, we'll work our way through. Oh, wait, that might be Bob. Is it Bob? Does that say Don Weisbord? Hi, good morning. It says Walt now. Oh, okay, sorry. This is public health and safety. Yes, yep. And your, your timing is perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, um, sorry, so since we just sent people walking around, we want to see if they want to make. Yes, yes, I think we'll start. If, you, if you're here to make a public comment, um, you're welcome to do so. And then we'll go to the folks on Zoom. Do you want to or do you want me? You can. Okay. Um, if you could just state your name and address. Uh, Karen Kirshner, 221 Iona Avenue here in Norworth. Um, I'm here representing the Iona Avenue residents. We have a great concern of um, regarding the speeding that happens on the street. As you may well know, there was an incident a week or so ago, maybe two weeks ago, with the neighborhood cat who was run over by someone who was speeding from Windsor to Meeting House. Um, the concern, while it was a cat and it was a loved cat by everybody in the neighborhood, suppose it had been a child. And we have grave concerns about that. Um, in my letter, I wrote that I have a sibling who was hit by a car at 17 and suffered a traumatic brain injury and spent several months in a coma and is now living in a rehab. So I have firsthand knowledge of what happens when someone is hit by a car. Um, we were just hoping that the borough could address our concerns, maybe give us some ideas. Several people have written letters to the borough regarding our concerns on that stretch of road. It seems that people use it as a cut through, people who don't really live there. Um, I see a lot of construction vehicles come down the street. It's not a very wide street. I've also seen large delivery trucks, I'm not talking like UPS or FedEx, I'm talking like the beer delivery trucks are coming down to drop off things to the restaurants or the food delivery trucks that are coming down. Um, we're asking that something be done to control the amount of traffic and the speed limit through the two and 300 block of Iona Avenue. We have children that have darted out into the street and almost been hit. We do have a young child on the street who, um, is autistic and has started out in the street. We, the family has put up a fence to keep him corralled in so that he doesn't dart out into the street. We're, we're very concerned that this could be more tragic, not to diminish the tragic incident of the cat, because we did love him, um, that this could be a child or even an adult for that matter. Like when we go out to our cars, we're certainly taking a risk because cars are speeding up and down the street. We've seen cars be hit by people speeding down the street. We've seen an alleged drunk driver hit somebody as they're driving out of their park, out of their driveway. So we're just hoping that the borough has some thoughts um, or can address this issue for us. And we've all written letters and we're going to also um, go door to door and get put a letter in everybody's box and get signatures to kind of oyster our plea here. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for for your comments. Um, would you would you like to make a comment? Yeah, my name is Marjorie Kasten. Okay. I live at two nineteen Iona. We just moved there this summer, and I have the kid M eight three, and my late cat. My cat mm -hmm. got it last two Fridays ago. At 1 p.m., the car was speeding, you know, from one stop to the other stop. And I don't think that the car has stopped at one of them. Just, you know, it's like slowed down slightly and then picked up speed. <clears throat> the cat did what my kids also do sometimes. Like, hey, here's my friend across the street. And he ran in. The car hit my cat and kept going. My kids play in um, on the street, on the sidewalk, all the time. It, this neighborhood must have 
at least 30 kids. The bus stop is full of kids. Tuesday, all the kids are lined up at the bus stop. Tons of parents. You have a wonderful, cute first grader that is running late and she's crossing the street being a kid. And again, somebody did not see the stop sign and almost ran over her. This is 8.20 on a Tuesday morning. And this is something that since July, I have seen quite often. I do have a wonderful driveway that I don't use. I park my car to block my driveway. So if one of the kids decide to you know, be very excited and run down the driveway, they have no other options than hitting my car and not being hit by a car. Mm -hmm. This is also something that the neighbor um, uh, has now started to do because their kid ran in the street. The kids actually love to play manhunt at night, okay? When it's 6.30, getting dark, okay? And then they run around in the neighborhood trying to kind of like find, kind of like a funny um, chase hide and seek version, okay? This is usually 15 kids, you know, aging from first grader to, um, you know, it's like ninth grade. It's a fun time. And it's like, Kids go around, knock on all the doors, like, come on, let's come and play, you know, manhunt. Every time I am outside, goes like, don't go in the street. Don't go in the street. It's like, and then if I see a car, I make sure that, like, I'm right there. Somebody will finish, end up being hit. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you coming to um, make these comments. Um, and, and we have heard from Rika Van Venti, as well as um, at least one other person by the email. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, okay. Would you also like to comment? Or to Molly. Make public comment? Yeah, I just wanted to be here. So, um, could I send your name and address? And we, we try to keep the comments to three minutes. Oh, yeah. No, no. I don't have anything prepared because, sorry, my voice. Um, I did send an email. Oh, name and address. Huh? Molly Burke two one five, Iona. I just wanted to be here as a voice to say there's a concern on the street. Um, I don't have a long speech or anything, um, but ever since I've lived on Iona, which was about seven years now, I've always thought that um, I wanted to raise attention to the speeding issue and the and the danger of that for kids, especially. Um, and it seems like now's the time because we've had some incidents. I, I regret not coming sooner because it's been a concern for a long time. Um, I know there have been traffic studies. I'm not aware of what they are. I'm not sure what the process is to get this going, but I just want it to be a voice of concern. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and if there's anything that can be done, I'm hoping it, it can happen. Well, thank you. I mean, our 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 process is that we did, um, initiated a traffic review when we had three complaints. Um, so you have accomplished that. Oh, yeah. out here. So I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. And that kind of activates our official process. It could take, you know, just to kind of set expectations, it does take a few months for us to try to figure out what's going to happen. What's going on? Yeah, um, but the professional staff have a, a process uh, for handling that. So, um, Samantha, I don't know if you want to say anything about. I think that it's all due respect. I think since it is an agenda item, maybe it might be better to just cover it all and come to the agenda item. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we were able to add that at the last minute, so we'll get to that. And we still have folks online for both. Oh, that's right. So we will we will actually return to this question on our agenda. Uh, so you're welcome to stay or, or leave as you need to. So we'll go next to the folks on Zoom. Hi, uh, my name is John Kistler. I am uh, Karen, Molly, Marjorie, and several others on the phone. Their neighbor. I live at 211 Iona Avenue. 
Um, I just want to echo everything that's been said so far. Um, there is a tremendous volume of traffic on Iona, uh, and there's kind of two types of drivers. One seems to be the ones that are local, and they're very respectful, and they stop at the stop signs, and they stop for buses, and they well, and they drive slowly. And then there is this huge, large volume of cut through traffic that seems to not do many of those things. Right? They roll through. The, um, the intersection of Windsor and Iona, they roll through the intersection of Meeting House and Iona. Um, this issue has, I've been on Iona for about 18 years. This issue has come up before. Uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, reactions to it was to have a no left-hand turn from Windsor to Iona during school hours. That was removed recently. Uh, I'm not sure why, but I'd like someone to explain that. Um, but uh, there is a huge problem here. And, and just so, so I'm on the block between Windsor and Meeting House, and I'm just counting in my head, there has to be uh, conservatively 16 uh, school age kids. And by school age, I mean elementary and maybe just cresting into, uh, into middle school. Um, if you go down the next block, we probably double that number. If you include Meeting House and Iona, you probably triple that number. There's a lot of young children that play on this block. And uh, it's a huge, huge, huge concern. OK, thank you. Thank you, John. Um, Cindy. Whatever. John, if you want me, I can address that question real quick. The left, the no left turn, the no left hand turn sign was put up, if you remember, years ago after we had the big meeting. Um, it was put up to kind of pacify us, but then never enforced. So recently, when we did, it had no effects because nobody paid attention to it because no, I think one or two days, perhaps they enforced it. So when Matt West, our former assistant program manager, did a sign diet, we had something like nearly 500 traffic signs. And essentially what traffic engineers will do is saying, when you have signs that are irrelevant and not enforced, people just ignore all signs. Mm -hmm. So I was actually the one to say, this has never been enforced. Why do we even have it up there? You know, if you're not going to enforce a sign, then take it down. Um, so I, I think it was a distraction to kind of pacify uh, neighbors on the street. And I hope that we can now kind of move on and use that traffic data. Stuff. Mm -hmm. but, so that's why I was taking down part of the sign, sign diet. Okay. So, so, okay. So, so uh, I, I understand what you just said. Um, and, and, you know, when this issue came up before, you know, the answer was, oh, we'll just call the township and we'll send the police officer out. And, and, Wow, what a band-aid. So if they came out two days out of the month, well, again, two days out of the month, people stopped or, you know, the cut through traffic calmed down. But the other 28 days, nothing. Yeah. So, well, and we're going to talk about that on the agenda. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll All right. That. Anyway, I, I said my piece. Um, there, there's a huge, huge problem here on Iona. Thank you. Thank you, John. All right. So we'll go to the next person and I think we'll have to use a timer because we are limited. We have to stop our meeting at nine, and we have a pretty full agenda. So, and can, let's go to the next person. I'll set time. Can I? Uh, can I speak? Or maybe this Go ahead. Okay, we'll go on forward, Michelle. Yeah, right. We're just talking around. Can I? Speak? Yeah. Can I speak? Go ahead. Yeah, if you could state your name and address. Yeah, my name is Marika Beneventi and I live at 212 Iona Avenue and I just wanted to reinforce what my neighbors have just said. I've lived here for over 10 years and I have witnessed a ton of accident cars being hit. Um, same thing, I have to put my car at the end of the driveway because car would reverse into my driveway to turn around and I had young kids playing. Um, the traffic is really, really intense. And, uh, and I think it's mainly people who are just using it as a cut through. And the concern is that soon the bridge is going to reopen and the traffic is just going to get worse. So th this traffic issue needs to be addressed, uh, sooner rather than later. Um, and the other thing is the traffic studies that were done and is it uh, possible to access them and is it possible to know what these traffic studies pointed to? Uh, it needs to be, it, it's something that needs to be done um, quickly because it's like just in the last 10 days we had two kids who were inches from being run over by cars. Our neighbor's cat 
I was killed in front of me. I was standing in the street and I saw the car just speeding through. It didn't even stop at the si stop sign after it hit the car. There is a large amount of cars who do not respect the school buses that are stopped. We now as parents have to stand at the bus stop around the bus to make sure the cars don't swerve around and hit children. So um, I think my neighbors covered all the, the, the topics that we are concerned about, but we're hoping, you know, that the borough can do something and soon. And, and also, if you could please let us know where we could find this traffic study so we can uh, familiarize ourselves and see what they pointed at. Is this something that is available on the borough website or could it be mailed out to us? The uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. We, we will um, follow up with you so that we can make that available. Uh, okay, who, who is next? Next we have Lauren. Hi, I'm at the bus stop. I only have one thing to add, and that is um, my son has um, a disability and he takes, uh, well, he took last year a secondary bus and that bus came behind the main school bus. And um, the people who had to stop at the cars that had to stop for the main bus and then the secondary um, bus with disabilities were so irate that I actually got followed home by a man who screamed at me and my kids on the way home and told us that we were, quote, effing ugly and all this kind of craziness as we felt as we walked home my children and I by myself um, one afternoon that I had to call the police because they didn't want to have to stop for two buses in the afternoon. And like, this is the kind of stuff we're dealing with. I'm getting screamed at by people daily. Totally unacceptable. And this is not an isolated event. This is all the time. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Okay. Yes, I would like to. I'm at 202 Iona. I've been here since 2013. Um, I have two small boys and I also have a 21 year old that also went to school in this district. I would just like to say that the traffic is atrocious. atrocious. I've also seen several accidents. Um, the kids do play in the street, which they should be able to, but the cars do not slow down. They um, have no regard for the fact that there's plenty of kids on this block. There's a lot of big trucks that drive through here to deliver things. They've knocked down the, um, the lines for the cable and the electric, and they just continue on in branches of people's trees. And um, it's been a huge concern for me. I've called the police on a number of occasions. Um, I also remember the sign being at the end of the block and people just disregarding that. Um, I can't even get out of my driveway in the morning because they're turning the corner, barely stopping at the stop sign. That's all I have to add, but I hope that something can be done. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Are there any other public comments? Okay, so we'll, we'll close public comment and um, we're gonna go next to um, Micah and then we'll, we'll return to this question of traffic concerns we actually have the Iona um, uh, concern on the agenda. So what we wanted to do next um, is offer a kind of brief review of how to use this MyGov feature. It's a way that all residents can report uh, complaints, including speeding complaints, safety concerns um, related to say a hazardous tree, um, Rodents, you know, there are lots of emails that we're getting related to public health and safety concerns that uh, we're hoping to route through this MICA app that we now have on the website. And it's been a real boon, I think, for the office staff because it really helps organize all of the different uh, complaints that turn into work orders. And I've seen the spreadsheets that are generated and it makes it possible to track each concern across different departments within the borough staff. So it's a highly efficient way to respond to residents' concerns. Um, but I know it's still fairly new and many of us aren't familiar with it, how to use it. So that's why I've asked um, if we could review it briefly uh, before we move to the next item. I think you're up. That is absolutely correct. It has been very helpful for the office. 
Um, the quickest way to get to MyGov is on our website, narvapa.gov. On the home page, you'll see MyGov information. If you click that button, it'll bring you to a page with a lot of information. Um, if you have any questions, I'm sure it goes through you know, the steps to um, submit a work order. Um, there's a banner right here, which will actually bring you to our MyGov page. <clears throat> here you'll see options to submit a request, apply for a permit, or apply for a contractor registration. Um, you can also um, look up addresses, see your requests, or download. There's an application you can actually download. So to submit a request, you would click on the request button, and it will bring up all the types of requests that you can submit. Um, so as Rob, men Rob mentioned, you can submit a uh, reported hazardous trait. Um, so you would just click on request. And it'll bring up some information for you to report. You can submit the information anonymously. However, you will not get the status of um, what is being investigated. Um, to report anonymously, just click on that button. Otherwise, put in your contact information. Um, you then put in the address of the where the um, complaint is, something the borough building. And then you would put your description here. What is the issue? What are you seeing? Um, what are your concerns? You can take a picture. If you're doing this on your phone, you can take a picture right on your phone. Or if you already have an attachment, you can add an attachment that way. Scroll down just a little bit more. Say, I'm not a robot. <laughs> and then you submit. And then that request will come right to our department that's responsible. You'll receive a confirmation email. And then when there are updates on the um, complaint, you'll receive emails for that as well. Um, do you have any questions? Yeah, so just to review some of the categories, mm -hmm. uh, hazardous tree, I see also there's the traffic re uh, traffic request category, mm -hmm. um, where it specifies that um, to initiate any traffic review, we need three different residents to submit a work order. Um, and um, I think also for say like rodents, is that its own category? Um, see report trash. Mm -hmm. Is this under request? Um, Are you under request? I'm under like work order request. Yeah, okay. there's general request, which I guess they catch all. Right. So if you don't see your request, submit a general request. Okay. Okay. So so folks don't need to create their own account or anything. No, you do not. Okay. So at this point, you can just kind of click through the system, mm -hmm. and it should take a matter of minutes. So yeah, I, mean, I just went through it. As much information, the more information we receive, the better, um, more understanding we'll have of the issue. Um, pictures are great. Um, and like I said, it goes directly to the responsible department. Um, so it's almost an immediate, um, you know, instant. We receive it instead of going through. I mean, you can still submit um, paperwork orders. That is fine as well. But it takes an extra step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Can I ask, can we do really a social media discrete post <coughs> outlining how to do this with a link? I know there's only in the flash a my the banner for my gut, but right. there's there's never I think it needs to be called to folks' attention. So outside of just the flash yeah. image, could we do a Facebook post with the link on how to do it and examples of when you can or what you can request via? Oh, I think that would be great because I, I you know, in talking to people, people are, are generally unfamiliar with my job. It's still, we've only had it maybe a year, right? Yeah, almost a year, yeah. Okay, so it's still a fairly new system, but um, on council, we've seen already how well it's working for the staff. We're able to get reports, uh, work orders, 
to see the status of different um, complaints and how they're being addressed. So it's a, it seems to be a really good system, and we just want to direct everybody to, to use it. Um, okay, so thank you, Michelle. All right, so we'll go to traffic concerns, item four here, and we have um, three related to Conway, and then the uh, fourth item is Iona. So are there any updates on the Conway? Yeah, this, so the first two, the Conway and Sabine and the Conway and Price, um, the last um, meeting, um, it was requested to with the Public Works Department to relocate the no parking signs further away from the stop sign um, for a better safe. Yeah. Okay. So that is in the process of being done. Okay. So then should we... So, anything else on Conway? Those first three. The, the, the third one is a recent uh, work order that is included in the packet. Um, the process for that is um, the first step really is the tracking counting devices being deployed by the Public Works Department, which were deployed on November 16th. So, we're currently collecting data. We should see that data at the next meeting. Is, I'm sorry, that's because we did that already at Conway Price years ago. Uh, this is Conway, Dudley, and Windsor. Like Conway and Windsor and Dudley and Windsor. Okay, got it. So we have Conway at Price. Mm -hmm. We have that data. I remember Matt doing that. Yes, and that is that's one of the um, ones that have the no parking signs being relocated away from the stop sign. Okay. Okay, but okay. The problem at Conway and Price, though, as I remember, is when you're coming down Price, there's the huge bushes, and you can't see the site. So you can't, but to see. To see if there's a car coming down Conway, you have to go into the middle of the intersection because the bushes are so high. So I remember our last conversation, we were saying either there needs to be a stop sign or those bushes have to actually be enforced to code because there, there is no sign on. Mm -hmm. And there is a, the code enforcement officer did go out and he did include it, uh, his investigation report stating that it does not violate code. They did uh, trim it a month or two ago. Okay. Yeah, I think this is one of the instances where technically people may be meeting the code and it's still not sufficient in terms of yeah. safety. I agree. I agree. So that would require a coaching. So I don't know. We would have to think about that. Or a stop sign. Or a stop sign. Um, okay, so maybe we should keep that one on on the list for next month and see if we could um, explore stop sign. I mean, that's what it's on here, right? Conway price stop sign. But I thought they're all right. It was stop. No, so there's a oh, the four way stop sign. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and this is one where I have to say I appreciated when Officer Bonaccio, I think it was Belfi, who said, yeah, that's a nightmare. There needs to be a stop sign <laughs> where we have the traffic engineer, which provides a valuable, obviously, evaluation and data. And then there is the kind of boots on the ground policing and citizen experience to say, data aside, this is a nightmare. Um, we've been talking about this as well since my time on council. And the concern was, well, you have people idling at the stop sign. That, that's a, a nightmare of an intersection. And if those bushes aren't put and not blocking the sight line, then, I mean, I, are we telling people, like, hold your breath and hope for the best <laughs> when you go straight or make a left? Or can we really have someone go back and look at what is the harm of making that a four way stop sign? Yeah, I mean, that would be fine if they did stack them from the huh. Okay, so, so then we get to the Iona um, 200 block we have on our agenda here. Um, we've heard concerns from, from the 300 block as well. So maybe we could talk about the, the our, our kind of normal process, you know, what we could, what we could do. <laughs> Uh, sure, I can, I can speak to that if that would be uh, if you'd like. Um, so our usual process is that we have uh, you know three different property owners report uh, concerns to the borough. Um, we have the police department 
uh, use the traffic counter to gather data on traffic volume and speed. Um, we have our traffic engineer provide, as, uh, as Cindy mentioned, our traffic engineer provides a uh, quantitative sort of analysis, and our police department helps provide a uh, qualitative analysis of the um, of the problem. And we've heard a lot of very good qualitative data here uh, today from folks uh, about what's going on there. And then the committee can start to decide what, um, you know, what solution to implement uh, to, you know, take care of the concern that's been raised. Uh, so what I would like to do, uh, you know, is, is move forward. Now we have the, uh, you know, complaints document, uh, move forward with that process of, you know, getting the, um, you know, traffic counting uh, and speed uh, data out there because we'll need that. Uh, even if we, you know, know that there know that there is a speeding problem, we have to have that data to comply with the rules from PennDOT before we actually make any, uh, you know, if we want to make any infrastructure improvements or any changes or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So um, we get that data, uh, and then I think um, in our next meeting, you know, we talk about what that data found, what information we have from the traffic engineer, what information we might have from, uh, what impressions we might have from our police department as to the situation and possible solutions. And I think we start talking about what the solution is and then do it. Mm -hmm. So can I add, we have the speed data and the reality is for years, because we they well, found that we don't have speed data. Well, we had speed data. I yeah, but it's that. not. Yeah. And I can tell you, it's not that much higher than 25. Mm -hmm. because and then we had talked about well we can't reduce it from 25 is too fast for that road or what people do is they'll jet quickly right to avoid a car and play chicken and it's still not that much higher than 25 so if the machine catches it it's a blur above it it really is a structural issue and that's why I don't know I can't even track the study maybe we can scan it and post it I don't know where the second one is that's the first one then we complained and we spent seven thousand dollars on the second one that said the same thing that the first traffic study had said mm -hmm. um and then i had, had said none of you were here yet um but john you may john may remember this i said well why are we spending more money on traffic studies when we don't do any of the suggestions mm -hmm. of the actual traffic studies so I mean, I can tell you, we did put the big speed thing out several times, and, and they say, yeah, the average speed is 26, 27, but it feels too fast for this road, and the road's not wide enough and two-way traffic uh, and two, two side parking, and then the neighbors have said, yeah, but we really need two side parking because most of the streets don't have a driveway or everybody doesn't use their driveway. Um, traffic has calmed considerably with the bridge out, because it's eliminated kind of half of the cut through. It certainly will get worse again <laughs> once the bridge opens. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's particularly with, nobody has mentioned bikers. I mean, we are that thoroughfare is part of that greenway where bikers would want to come up Windsor and cut over to get on the ballot. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are some real structural noted concerns for the last 15 years, and there's just never been the will to tackle it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think for many of the reasons that we're all saying, it's a major cut through and street, so it, it is, is wide reaching. For sure. It's, it's um, 200 and 300, it's really limited to those two blocks. Yeah, I'll tell you, I think it, in, and I have to think, what is the collision care? What block is that? 100 uh, or 400? Which one does it go? Uh, that's going to be the 400 uh, block. 400 is, yeah, it's by Montgomery. Okay, so the 400 block, they're very different problems. The 400 block of I don't know, you cannot fit two cars in parking. So you can't speak. It's a game of chicken. Um, buses, it's a nightmare when the bus has to come down there. I mean, the poor folks on the 400 block of Iona, um, there had been suggestions to make it one way, you know, to do a do not enter. And then what would happen, folks on Hampton would say, well, then the cars will drive down our street. Mm -hmm. It's um, not a throughway. Hampton ends. I understand what you're saying, but right. I mean, so these are the discussions that we've had for 15 years, right. and then people just say, "Yeah, well, you bought knowing it was busy street." 
I mean, this is what we had often been told. Well, I, I think I think it's kind of a new day in the sense that we we have we have a new system. We have um, also talked quite a bit about infrastructure solutions beyond policing. You know, it's difficult for um, a small police force in a borough to you know be the eyes and ears on every block. Of course, and so. I, my sense is that we need to move in, in the direction of an infrastructure um, change. But, you know, I, I know we need, the, we need the expertise. I'm hoping we could we could kind of keep to that timeline. Do you think, I mean, we have the second traffic counter, so we could deploy that right away? Or Since that, well, I'm trying to think right now, Michelle, you would actually know better than me. Sorry, put you on the spot here. Um, uh, right now, the traffic counter is, I believe, over um, uh, handling the 4.3 complaint, the Conway Dudley Lenser. Right, and it should be completed pretty soon. So as soon as that's completed, we can transfer it. I think the other, yeah, because I think we need both of them for that, because that's, uh, um, right now, I, I do believe we are using vote for that, but um, that is good to know, so thank you for the information, Michelle, that it does sound like we will be able to meet the time frame you're talking about and that we can get those uh, resituated, uh, you know, start gathering. And if, and if the data does show that there is technically a speeding problem, that doesn't preclude us from taking action. Right. It's just, that's just the formality we have right. to go through in order to take action. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. Because that was really kind of the end of the conversation very often. Well, it's really only 28. Uh, where I think yeah. the significance is, but 28 affects safety and quality of life on a road that wasn't built for this capacity. So there is a, the signal to it being in the day, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. so, um, and then the left-hand turn sign, complete waste of time. <laughs> Again, do we really want to pay a police officer 24-7 to sit there and write tickets? I mean, that's not the way to address this problem. It's a structural issue. Mm -hmm. So we should do it structurally. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think we could um, have, uh, you know, the information together uh, for your uh, January meeting to, uh, you know, to be able to actually start to figure out a, a action to solve the problem. Great. Okay. And... And also, I mean, we've talked about speed bumps and different kind of infrastructure um, solutions. And I know we have a uh, grant project, you know, possibly we're waiting to hear from, right? But Oh, well, not for that part. Not for that, okay. Yeah. But I mean, it's the kind of thing, like if, if say, the staff agreed that speed bumps were a solution, we, we could move ahead with that in the calendar, calendar year 2023. Oh, uh, yeah, Without, yeah. Sorry, I was about to get five. So I thought you were about to mean like by, by the end of this year. No, no, no. No, that's 100%. Like without, yeah. without a grant. Yeah. Like, if we could handle that. Okay. That's what I'm hoping. You know, we'll, we'll, obviously we'll defer to those professionals, but. Yeah, and part of, I mean, just so people, again, expectation setting here, um, you know, whatever solution we come up with is going to be one that probably the borough, we have a great public works department, don't get me wrong, but. Um, like, you know, if we're talking speed bumps, speed tables, if we're talking any, you know, uh, any sort of infrastructure change to that intersection or, or roadway or anything, that's not going to be a job our public works department will be able to do. So we'll have to bring in a contractor to do it. And there's going to be, uh, you know, a certain time delay in terms of finding a contractor and then getting them out there to actually um, do the work. But I'm hopeful that at least, you know, there will be, you know, uh, you know, forward progress and, um, you know, and, and we'll start with our next meeting by actually getting that formality and getting that data out of the way so we can actually decide on what we want to do. And then we can talk through more about the process to actually make that happen. Is. Okay. Can, can I just, did Jeff Elton go through that SEPTED, the Crime Prevention for Environmental Design Certification, or is that just Gates team? No, I, I remember. Um, I'll double check. I think I remember someone from Public Works attending that. Yeah, I thought somebody, because this is yeah. kind of exactly what they're talking about. And one of the tools that was used a few years ago was Public Works came and put the yield to pedestrian um, signs, you know, the, the mobile street signs at Windsor and Iona. Because one of the discussions was to narrow the road and people slow down. 
right? Which is also one of the concerns. You say, okay, you take parking from one side, guess what? People are going to go faster because now the road's not as narrow. So one of the suggestions was narrow it at the stop sign with these signs. Well, people hit them and move them. So we had discussed, we do a planner. Um, it's still wide enough for the fire trucks to get through, but do those giant planters. And I, I say that because I wonder if this is a tool that if Mr. Eldon went through that training, maybe he could look at it, mm -hmm. particularly with his expertise in environmental design anyway, that maybe there are some things that we could do in-house. Okay. Um, in the meantime. I'm, I'm sorry, we're, we're oh, short on time. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's a good question. No. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, but please feel email. free to stay after the meeting or email us. Okay. It's just we're we're not even halfway through it, and we have only 10 minutes. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so I think I think we have a plan here, and this means that we would we would discuss Iona again at our January meeting, um, public health and safety in this committee. So um, we welcome your comments. You can stay in touch by email, and we'll we'll be working on this next process. All right, thank you. So I think uh, we could go next to number five here, the fire company. And uh, Bill is here. Um, I know we wanted to talk about the open burning regulations that Bill had proposed. And, uh, you know, that might be all we have time for uh, this meeting. I don't know, um, Michelle Smith, if, if there's anything else pressing or if we can move the items. I don't know if the EV charging we need to talk about that today, if that could be, or the EV, not me, yeah, thanks for us. And, mm -hmm. um, no, I think um, I think that that can wait. Thank you, that Michelle. Yeah, right. Okay, so I think we'll have to move item six through ten to to January mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I know we need to stop right now. Okay, so with Bill here, why don't we? Um, it, it, would you uh, would you want to say a few words just about the the, the work that you've done, and, and we thank you for your work on it. Sure. I mean, obviously, the, the previous fire code had no no open burning allowed in the borough at all because of the density, and uh, and obviously we want to move forward to because people uh, started to enjoy their uh, portable outdoor fireplaces during, especially during COVID and stuff like that. So we we proposed some changes to the international fire code section three hundred seven. Uh, basically, the long and short of it. We wanted to add recreational fire to uh, recreational fire night and I in the document I presented um, it defines a fire three feet or less in width two feet or less in, in height that's basically not in a not a portable outdoor fire pit it's just where somebody puts a uh, fire pit ring or they, 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 just, they just have a fire in their backyard so we want to make that kind of fire permit needing a permit because there's no way to really contain it uh, that, that that would include be included bonfires already need a needed fire a, a permit. Uh, for the portable outdoor fire pits, we wanted to they there is an exemption in uh, in there that, that allows them to be closer to combustible structures than we feel is safe. We wanted to eliminate that exemption and we also wanted to add the language for a portable outdoor fire pit. I'll read the whole thing. Uh, portable outdoor fireplaces shall be used in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions, and we wanted that with all required parts of the portable uh, outdoor fireplace in use. What we're seeing is a lot of people are using the fire uh, portable outdoor fireplaces and not put, putting the screens on the on or the lids on, and they actually actually act as a spark arrester to keep create uh, to, to not allow sparks to get out and cause a fire hazard. So we're seeing a lot of people, it's like, you know, we've had, we've gone to the thing, you know, calls where we get a complaint where there's a lot of sparks going on because we have some people who put them on and they do and problems solved. Um, but we just want to put it, we wanted that language in there just to strengthen it a little bit so that, so that our members know that they have the authority to tell somebody to either put the, put the screens on or put the fire pit out. And uh, we didn't propose any changes to what I think is the most important part, 307.5, but a, a portable outdoor fireplace and any open burning needs to be constantly attended with a way to put the fire out in, a, in the immediate vicinity. We're seeing a lot of it where nobody has a hose, nobody has a bucket of water. If something gets out of control, they have no way 
to control the fire unless they call us. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to eliminate. We don't, we don't, I mean, we don't want to come to the calls. I mean, we, I mean, we want people to enjoy it, enjoy it. I mean, quite honestly, I, I, I enjoy it myself. I mean, we, we just try to make everybody safe. We don't want to have a nightmare like we've had a couple of times in the not too distant view. Yes. So okay, I, I just want to clarify that for, for fire pits, there would no, no, there would be no permitting. There would be no. I mean, so for, for the, the fire pit that you would buy at a store, there's no permitting necessary. Right. I mean, because that's I think something as you say, a lot of a uh, lot of residents really value, and so we don't want to we don't want to add um, too much. You know, no. regulation make that household. What what we're trying to eliminate is that we we have somebody. Cut, a, cut the bottom of a 55 gallon drum and throw a bunch of stuff in there. There's no way to control the sparks. If, if there's no way to control if there's an overflow. Um, with with the, uh, the the store vault on the portable agro fire pieces, you have it's all it's all self contained. You have a lid that you can put on it, maybe a big lid, maybe a small lid, but it, it acts they act as spark arresters to keep the uh, the embers from uh, going out and creating a fire hazard to potentially your neighbor's house too or to your backyard. I actually have the video from our meet and greet of uh, yeah. Mr. Henderson giving that advice. And I have to say, I have, it's scary to think that someone's building a permanent or semi-permanent fireplace or fire pit in our small little yards without anybody eyeballing it. So I, I do agree that if you're putting something semi-permanent that's going to do a fire in our dense neighborhood, mm -hmm. that it should be a permitting process. And that's very different than a portable store bought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and bonfires, is that even appropriate? I mean, I'm just wondering. Yeah. I've, 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 been, I've been to two bonfires in my, uh, I'm not going to say how long, but uh, one was for, I think, the, the Girl Scouts had wanted to have one uh, out on the field down here for a, a, a jubilee, a jubilee, and I don't remember what year that was. And we went down and we eyeballed it. It was safe, but we, and we actually kind of hung around. The other, the other time, the, the American Legion did a large flag burn. Now they had it in a, in a, in a big container, but I would consider that a bonfire because it was bigger than two feet wide, and the flames we kept the flames down. But we actually could have them. We had fire that was there, so I mean, it, I mean, the extinguishing means was there, and then I mean, that they're the only two times that I remember anything bonfire. I mean, I mean, so, sometimes you see. I mean, it, obviously, Lower Marion, but like the high school might have one before a big football game or something like that. <laughs> But we don't, I mean, it would have to be, the only place that really we have room to do a bonfire would be out of the field. Where I mean, that would require a special, I think, I mean, I think council would need to be involved in the decision on the level of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, so Cindy, do you have any other questions about the, what's being proposed? I mean, if you're interested, I could, I, could, I could change the language to what the way it would look in, in the, uh, in the code, if we uh, if you choose to move forward, I just didn't want to spend the time doing that. Mm -hmm. If uh, if you're if you weren't interested in any of these changes, so I, I don't know if there's any feedback from the staff. I mean, do you think it's uh, do you have any concerns? Not concerns. No, I think no. I really I could build a lot of credit for it. It's really good. Okay. Yeah. So my my only you know reservation is because Bob is sick. You know, a third member. Um, I did want to give him a chance to look over it sure. before we kind of move ahead. So I think I'd like to delay it one more month so that we could we could have uh, give him a chance. I, did, I mean, discuss, discussion is good. I, I mean, I welcome anybody who has any questions, concerns. Well, sorry. Uh, well, no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, but before moving it ahead, it's a formal process. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so thank you so much, Bill. Really appreciate you You're doing welcome. this in a way that um, keeps people safe, but also respects, you know, our kind of COVID reality. People really need to socialize outside. Um, all right, so so um, I'd like to just keep that on the agenda for January, so we can uh, formally decide as a committee then. If you like. so, Okay, so um, I think that's pretty much all we have time for. I mean, unless, you know, I, I do need to leave right at nine and. <laughs>
Yeah, that's fine. Is that okay? Um, the plastics ordinance updates. Can, can we oh, yeah. ask to put that maybe and the shade tree at the top of the list of our next agenda? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, let's see. And the shade tree more, not the Marionette Hazard's tree work, but um, I was interested in, in coming across putting in the shade trees in the right of way, specifically in North Narberth, although I'm not sure that we, nothing can happen till spring, I suppose, at this point, with right of way shade, shade trees. Perhaps it's not a priority. Well, we should, yeah, we, we can do that. And, and I appreciate, um, I think it was Smith, right? They, they, they gathered all of this on so, the Sorry, I don't, I'm going to particularly, I don't know, I guess I'm going to move this one, but I, I guess I'll say that you'll probably want to talk about it in January if you want it to actually happen in spring. Okay. That's not okay. good. That's a good timeline. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, and the plastics, you know, there's a, there's a lot of good um, kind of sample ordinances here from Radner that were gathered by Smith, I think. Oh, uh, no, well, actually, Michelle. Okay. But, yeah. And so we could review those as well. And then in January, we could kind of move ahead on that. Okay. So maybe as an assignment is to really narrow down in the meantime, the January with the firm recommendation of what we could draft or give to Wonka. Yeah, because there, there are different variations on, you know, kind of plastics 2.0, and we could figure out what exactly we want to do uh, by looking at those sample ordinances. So and yeah, they are included in the package. Uh, yeah, I see them. Yeah. I mean, I think independently, I kind of have my own opinion to that, which I would Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's do that. So maybe maybe in January we could we could move up, you know, the plastics ordinance and um, shade tree, and um, we'll have traffic concerns, of course. And I'm also going to be asking the PAC and the EAC if they could provide us with some updates in January, February, March, early next year. Okay. Uh, okay, so I think I think that's all we can do today. So um, thanks everybody, and we're we're adjourned.